The Young Stars Classic is fully underway in Penticton, and we bring you the four biggest takeaways from Game 1 that will go above and beyond towards developing the future of the Canucks. We're going to be breaking down all of that in this episode of Canucks Digest, but first make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss a and updates surrounding the Canucks as the tournament progresses. With that, let's hop into the first topic of the day, which is Young Stars Classic Game 1. And we see here that the Vancouver Canucks rookies did play the Edmonton Oilers rookies, and Vancouver won by a score of of two to nothing and when looking at the score by period scoreless first period vancouver opened it up in the second period with a goal by max saxon and then christian felton put the final nail in the coffin in the third period and as far as shots on goal by period, Edmonton edged us out in the first period, but then in the second and third period, Vancouver just brought an onslaught of offense, led by Jonathan Lecker and Mackey. We're going to get to that in a second. And then Christian Felton did put it away in the third period, like I said. And then when we look at the scores, of course, you got Max Saxon in the third, coming in at 18-22. And then at 16-31 in the third, Christian Felton. The Saxon goal was a great second effort rebound off his own shot on the power play. And then as well with Christian Felton as well, he had a very beautiful goal where he snuck it around the goalie it was awesome to see there was a lot of great things to watch in this game and there was a lot of great prospects that we're going to get into many of which are going to be ones that we've talked about before some of which that we've never talked about before as well that we're going to be excited to talk about in the future as well and when we look at the lineup that they had for this game you can see there you can pause it you can take a look you can see what the matchups were line by line and defense pairing by defense pairing as well as the goalies Tolapil also had a great game we're going to get to that in a second as he pitched a perfect shutout we saw there that my guy Anthony Romani was on the second line pairing Mark's number one guy and everyone's number one guy for the Canucks prospects Jonathan Lecker and Mackey was on that first line with Arshdi Baines and Atu Ratu and that's going to bring us into the second topic of the day which is the four biggest takeaways and the first biggest takeaway that we're going to have from this game is the veterans played like veterans. You see there were Arshdi Baines paired with Atu Ratu and Jonathan Lekermaki was in constant motion and looked well above his opposition. The trio consistently applied pressure with Baines orchestrating several shifts that kept the Oilers defense well on their heels. And this is a, a trio that we're going to see in Abbotsford probably quite often where if they're developing this chemistry early on, it's going to be interesting to see how they pro progress throughout the season in Abbotsford and have a bunch of games under their belt altogether, especially when they're guys that are seemingly poised to jump to the NHL around the same time. We've seen that Baines got hit some of his swings. Lecker Mackey's gotten uh, barely any, any opportunities, but he's going to be getting more. So it's going to be great to see these guys develop going forward. And with Atu Ratu, we're going to be touching on him a bit later on in this video. And then we also have as well, Max Saxon recently turned 24, brought his typical game. Not only did he get the weekend going with a goal off the rush, but he stood out on the ice with poise and maturity in nearly every shift. He was definitely the one that was outshining his line mates. He was the one that was leading the way for them and making sure that they were developing opportunities and finding the back of the net like he did in the second period. As well as in gold, Nikita Tolopilo approached the outing with his typical calm and composed game, making 21 saves for the shutout, despite not facing any high danger chances. Like we said, Edmonton couldn't really get close to the net, and he was a steady presence all night between the pipes with three goaltenders invited to the event. This may be his only game of the weekend, and if that's the case, he made his point. And this is going to be interesting going forward where they now have an opportunity where he could find his way into this starting lineup or starting a few games for the Vancouver Canucks over potentially Yuri Patera where Patera does have more experience. But this kid, he just shined in this game. He pitched a perfect shutout. Yes, he wasn't having the pressure that other goalies were having or that they were applying to Edmonton. But again, he did prove enough where he did have no goals allowed. So that does speak for itself on paper alone. So if we're going into a season where Thatcher Demko is potentially not going to be coming back for a while and we're going to have to cycle in a few goalies just to make sure that Archer Shelovs doesn't get overworked and being in that same danger that Demko has been in since playing for Vancouver, I think Tolapilo did make a case why he should start at least maybe five games just to see how the kid does and play those early on games where once we have Demko back, we can get on a steady streak. But if we want to set the tone as far as goaltending and seeing who's a good fit, we can see that in the early on in the season. Tolapilo did go a long way of doing that. The second of which of the top four biggest takeaways from the game was Jonathan Lekker Mackey. This kid was 
electric. He was just firing shots from everywhere. He was a constant threat from the drop of the puck, electrifying the crowd with his dynamic play. Although he didn't make it onto the score sheet, it wasn't for lack of effort. Lekker was inches away from scoring on multiple occasions with shots ringing off posts and narrowly missing the net. One in the third period in particular who he even thought it went in. Everybody else in the arena thought it went in. The goalie seemed to be the only, even he thought he went in. The only one who seemed to know it didn't go in was the defender and even the referee seemed a bit unsure. His work rate was high and he wasn't afraid to gauge physically battling along the boards and in the corners. This is going to be awesome to see going forward where Lekromacki has played so great on the international stage and now he's bringing that to the the Vancouver Canucks in the Abbotsford stage where he's bringing us to North American ice and showing that he can adapt and play with this North American pace and this North American ice being the size that it is and working within that I think he's going to be very dynamic on Abbotsford next season him with Ratu and Baines is going to be a great trio to watch I think them doing this early on is going to be showcasing maybe some of the potential lines we're going to be seeing in Abbotsford and I think this is going to be a very good outlook as far as one of our top lines is looking. The other person of which that we're going to touch on is Atu Ratu upping his stock. He is the perfect age bracket for the tournament and his performance in the first game was exactly what the Canucks were hoping to see. Although he already accumulated a lot of AHL experience, he's still a young kid with tons of roadway to develop. But in game one, he played with the composure and effectiveness of a seasoned veteran. His journey with the Canucks has been a mix of high and lows, and his first full season with the club was no exception. Flashes of brilliance were met with periods of inconsistency, leaving most fans wanting more. However, his performance against the Oilers showcased all the work he had clearly worked on throughout the summer. We touched on that before, how he was working on his skating, and we talked about how they're going to utilize him in different positions. We have a quote on that as well. But then we also go into the cherry on top playing that he did play at, and at center, which would be music to the ears of Canucks fans. Under the guidance of new coach Manny Malhotra, a noted center guru, it would be a huge relief that Ratu found his footing consistently up the middle in the upcoming season. But they did address him playing on the wing as well. With that, he says, yeah, that was kind of the first time I've ever played wing. Uh, I think it's great to have a couple of different positions that you can play and kind of be more well-rounded and learn about the wingers game too. So I think it's great. I think it's going to be awesome to have him as the Swiss Army Knife and Utility Belt that Vancouver can use on just multiple positions and use him around the uh, around the ice greatly where he can fill in for injured spots or just play on multiple lines to see how he meshes with other guys chemistry and as well too on his skating he did have his own critique where skating that's my biggest thing I need to work on I think it's gotten better but there's still lots of steps I could take and then I kind of worked on all my all-around game just trying to get faster trying to get stronger so even with the performance he had he knows things he needs to work on and he's prepared to do that and make sure that he gets it done. So he did showcase a lot in this game. And I think it's going to go very well going forward. And I think he's poised for a really good season. I'm sure Manny is just going to mold him into this Swiss Army Knife type player that Vancouver is going to be able to utilize in the future going forward as one of these players that teams are just going to be very scared of because they're not going to know what to do with him or how to deal with him playing different positions and just being so lethal at different points of the ice. And the other person that were other two people that we're going to touch on to is the defenseman where we have DPD or Elias Pettersson and Kirill Kudryatsev have been early were an early highlight. They played together for most of the first game and appeared to form a strong partnership. Kudryatsev spoke highly playing alongside Pettersson saying, I love playing with him. He's a big body, so it's easy to play with him. I mean, I'm just enjoying it. This duo could be key for the Canucks as they represent the two organiza- two of the organization's top defensive prospects outside of Tom Willander. He's definitely the number one. Kud's ability to play and look good on his offhand is important given the crowded left side in Abbotsford. We're going to touch on that in a second where he does speak on playing on his offside where he's uh, uh, where he said as well that I don't care if I'm playing whatever I can play forward or in goal. I just love to play. And as well, he anchored the blue line on the second unit along with my favorite prospect, Anthony Romani, Vilmer Ulrikson, Riley Patterson, and Damila Kilmovich. While not as potent as the top unit, this combination brings a fun dynamic to the game in its own merit. And a few of these guys aren't going to make that jump to Abbotsford right away as well. It's going to be a journey for them to get there as well. There's going to be some speed bumps along the way, and there's going to be guys that don't just splash early on. Romani is going to be one of these guys that develops, but he was getting shots on net, so it's nice to see that he's getting involved in there. That's going to be awesome to see him develop going forward. I think he could be one of those guys that turns into this Jonathan Lekromaki type player where 
where he's just going to be lethal and constantly make things happen, whether he's the one scoring it or setting up players or just creating opportunities for everyone else involved. So that's going to be interesting to see going forward. And as well here with uh, Kudz saying all these things, it just shows that him, like him and Aturatu, they're just willing to play wherever they can play. It doesn't matter if they have to play on their regular side or their offside or in a position that they're not familiar with playing in as much as other ones. So this Abbotsford team is open to just molding these players into playing different positions, making them very versatile so that they are a problem for other teams, not only the AHL, but eventually when they make the jump to the NHL and making sure that the Canucks are a team that teams don't know what to do with, don't know how to prepare for, at least for the first season before they get some solid tape on you. But until that going forward, I think Vancouver is in this place where the future is looking very, I'll say very utilizing as far as how they're going to utilize these players where they're going to use them in different positions and make sure that they are the best that they can be and just be a mystery to these teams and catch them by surprise. Let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. What did you think of game one? How do you think these rookies are looking? Do you think that the future is bright in Vancouver compared to what people are saying? But that's going to take us into our third topic of the day, which is comment of the day. And we see here in a comment from Mike Godin. Come on, start the season already. I want to see them boys chemistry in action. We saw some early flashes in this Young Stars classic where some of these prospects chemistry is already developing into something great but we already know that this team chemistry with this main Vancouver Canucks team is the bread and butter of what the identity of this team is making sure that these guys have played together for a while and just meshing in with them quickly and making sure that any newcomers just feel welcomed and they just blend with the team right away we're seeing that with a lot of new acquisitions Vinny Dayarnay is already seemingly meshing so well with the team as well that's going to be awesome to see I can't wait for this season to get started but that's going to do it for this episode of Canucks Digest hope you guys enjoyed leave a like comment subscribe it is free so just feel free to leave a click down below. We're trying to reach 5,000 by the start of the season, but that's going to do it for this episode. I've been your host, Griffin. Take care.